What's up guys? Welcome back to another Tied Up Tuesday. It's only week two and we already got the substitute teacher. Davis, or otherwise known as Darnsworth, he's in England right now with his dad visiting some family. He will be back at some point, but for now, we're gonna have some fun. None of that monologue BS that he's on. We're working on it. But anyways, today I'm gonna tie a Crazy Charlie style fly. I'm not gonna do it the traditional way, but I'm gonna do it the way that I tied them when I went to Belize recently. And I'm gonna just show you the materials that I'm gonna be using right now. And then I'm gonna show you me catching a bonefish on this fly. So first off, we got some Gamakatsu's SL45's size eights. Um, it's a bonefish hook. And then I got some uh, chain eyes from Orvis, got a calf tail, and a little bit of flash. That's all you need. Check out this clip of the bonefish I caught on this fly. So right here, I had caught this bonefish. We were looking at the mangroves that were overlaying this flat, and I took that crazy Charlie that I'm about to tie in this video, and I casted it right to him. Absolute splashless cast, um, and he, uh, Followed it immediately, but he didn't take it, and so I had to twitch it for about 30 feet. He followed and followed and followed, and finally he took the crazy Charlie. Took me on about a 100-yard run, and then uh, after that I got him to the boat, hopped in the water, and landed him to make sure that uh, he stayed healthy, and we got a really safe and sweet release. Um, it was stay awesome. Stay tuned, because I'm going to show you a full clip cast to catch everything to end the video. Tip number one for cutting chain eyes, use your buddy scissors. Thanks Davis. Ah, there it goes. Those will cut your thread real nice next time. So tie these on however you know how. I hope you guys don't take me as any uh, fly tying guru, because that's not what I'm trying to do. Just trying to show you guys the flies that I was catching bonefish on in Belize. So, just figure my eyes on a little bit. This is the time where you would super glue them if, um, you know, you have super glue. I'm not going to do that because I don't have time for it to dry. I know you guys don't want to stick around that long. So, got the eyes tied on. And the first thing um, you're going to do is you're going to get about three strands of flash. And you're going to even them out. Oh, we got a, got a scraggler right there. Oh, now we got a scraggler over there. It's fine. Even them out. And then you're going to snip them. And then you're going to take the little guy out. And then you're going to even it out. And you're going to cut it. Come on now. And then Darnsworth's going to be mad at me because this is not using materials to the fullest. But I will use those. And I'm going to cut right there. And that's what you're left with. So you got these right here. And what you're going to do is, you're going to tie it in on top of the eyes right here. I like to tie it in and then fix it how you like it, because I'm a lazy flat tire. But then you can get a couple wraps in and then you can pull some of your strands to make them a little bit longer, closer, and out of the eye. I wanna cover up that eye. But then you come back behind the chain eyes 
and then you're going to kind of tie it on similar to how you would tie a clouser. I like to go one, two, three, four, five. And then go back and set yourself up to flip it over. A lot of people tie tubing on the body right here. I personally didn't find it useful for these bonefish because they were very uh, trigger happy. They were ready to eat. So in that case, there's no reason to spend the time uh, putting tubing on. Next, I mean you want to get a microscopic amount of calf hair, calf tail, and you're going to put that on the bottom just like this. Again, I'll adjust it and then try and pull some of these fibers through just a little, tie it down, pull them back. Then you're just going to hit the whip finish. Oh, where's my whip finish? Substitute teachers never come prepared. So then you want to take your fly off the vise, and I'm going to cut some of these just a little bit shorter. Not the calf hair, but the flesh. And so that's what it's going to end up looking like. So that's what it's going to end up looking like when it's all said and done. A lot of times these uh, bonefish are feeding on pinky nail sized shrimp and that's what that's imitating. I tied it on some uh, chain eyes because I want it to be very light. We're fishing in one foot of water, you know, maybe two feet of water. And so you want to um, stock these bonefish and be as quiet as possible when you're casting. When you're not the best caster, you know, you need as much help as you can get. And so as you'll see in this next clip, I lay a fly down nice and soft right in front of a bonefish, get him to chase my fly and hook into him really nice. Um, and it's just an epic way to catch fish. Super easy, easy fly to tie. And as you can see, when it's like this, it actually looks like a shrimp. If you guys like this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and make sure that December 18th, you guys tune in for the full video of Belize, where we use this fly and many others to catch bonefish, permit, and jump a bunch of tarpon. It's an epic video, so you guys aren't going to want to miss it. Thanks for tuning in, and happy holidays.